here to talk about food. <laughs> um, good morning. It's great to be here. Um, my, my purpose really this morning is to do a, do a short course in Hawaiian conservation for our distinguished guests. So um, I think probably many of you in this room could do the same presentation, um, so I hope you'll bear with me. But I, I just wanted to do some basics on Hawaiian conservation. Um, and, um, you know, just to start off with, uh, to, to compare Hawaii to India. I mean, we are not like a star in the universe compared to uh, uh, India size-wise. Um, but, but this is our star, and we're, we're very proud of it. Um, I did note from the uh, comments this morning that the um, number of lawyers in, in India is equal to the population of Hawaii. Should I correct? It is 1.8, not 1.8. Ah, okay, so there are more lawyers in India than there are people in Hawaii. <laughs> so just, just uh, briefly on conservation in Hawaii, I wanted to just boil it down to about four points, and I'll uh, tell them to you ahead of time. And one is uh, diversity, natural diversity. Uh, one is uh, the threats to conservation in Hawaii. Uh, one is, uh, from a human standpoint, our unique host culture and our intimate relationship, which I think is not unlike uh, the relationship between humans and and uh, the environment uh, that you outlined this morning. And the other is that uh, our very strong collaboration ethic here, um, we call it a kokua thing, the, we're all in it together, and we are all working on the solutions together. So just to run through a few examples here, uh, the first thing you, you know about Hawaii from coming here is the uh, tremendous isolation of Hawaii. I mean, we are um, thousands of miles away from the uh, nearest uh, high island landmass or large landmass. And um, that meant that we were completely isolated um, in terms of what species could migrate here, um, coming in on a, a wave or a storm. And so very, very slowly, something would come from someplace else and um, evolve, therefore, into very, very unique species. So our, our endemism is very, very high in Hawaii on both the land side and the, and the marine side. Um, we have just many, many thousands of species that are found nowhere else on the planet. So when we want to protect them, we want to protect them not just for Hawaii, but for the world. And similarly, um, we're a very young, uh, a young land, um, just in, in terms of uh, millions of years. Uh, and that is very, very different from anywhere else, um, uh, any island state or, or most ecosystems. Um, and so therefore we are still evolving and we're, we're, we're more evolved in, uh, in the northwest sides of the island and, and brand new on the southwest sides, uh, southeast sides of our, of our island chain. And so that means we're, we're as an ecology, we are, um, we are unique and we are still, we're still moving. We have, because we're a high island landmass, we have uh, most of the major biomes in the world represented here, in a, again, in a very tiny area. Uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, uh, alpine, uh, all the way down to dry forest, all the way down to coastal habitat. So it's unique. You can be just about anywhere in Hawaii and see the tremendous uh, d uh, different uh, zones and therefore different habitats and different um, species that, that are, live in them. So here's just a few examples of the very unique species we have in, in Hawaii. Um, and so, for example, in the bottom left here, you have um, the uh, uh, honey creeper and the lobelia evolving together uh, so that uh, the size of a bill exactly fits the size of particular flowers. So if you lose the flowers, you lose the birds as well. We're a very wet area. Um, our ohia forest, this is one of the threats going on right now is our ohia forests are under threat uh, on the Hawaii island from uh, from a fungus, rapid ohia death, um, but the, the forest itself is a very intact, beautiful um, koa ohia forest that provides with uh, ferns in the understory a very thick um, sponge that captures rainwater and feeds our aquifers, and that's where we get our water. The, um, the, the mists are uh, captured on the leaves of the plants and soak in very slowly. So when this forest is intact, uh, we recharge our aquifers. When it's not intact, we lose that water and mud with it down into our streams and onto our reefs. So we want very much, in order to preserve our, our native species, our forests, and our water supply, we want this forest to be intact. 
On the marine side, we have tremendous um, uh, diversity as well. We have high levels of endemism. Um, uh, a quarter of our reef species are found nowhere else on the planet. In the Northwest Hawaiian Islands, there are places where um, there's close to 100% endemism um, uh, species, so unique that you can't find them anywhere in all of them. Uh, some of these are very iconic, our Hawaiian green sea turtle, our Hawaiian monk seals, um, and these are representative of us. I think the, the other thing, um, because we have a very strong ho host culture, um, the, uh, there's a very close relationship between, um, between humans and, and our native species. And in, and in a Hawaiian culture, um, m many of these are, are amakua, our, our ancestors themselves. And so there's a very um, important uh, spiritual relationship that uh, um, binds us um, um, morally to, to take, care of, take care of them. We have, similar to India and other places in the world, we have uh, a whole transformation that has happened in the last few hundred years um, of our islands and our society uh, through, um, in our case, Europeans that, that arrived in the late 1700s. Um, and and um, introduced uh, from an from a, uh, ecosystem perspective, introduced hooved, hooved animals to Hawaii. So uh, goats, deer, pigs, sheep, and cattle were not here originally. And so our forests and our plants and our species did not evolve uh, with any natural defenses to them. So w the result is that these animals graze and dig and uh, completely destroy our forests, and they've escaped up into the forest in the last couple hundred years. So that you know where they are present, um, the um, the forests are totally destroyed. This is this is something uh, you you can see the erosion here. This is a more dramatic example of uh, what's supposed to be there versus uh, what happens. This is a fence you're seeing, a fence line along this valley. So you, you, you know, on the right hand side you're going to see in this case mostly goats and on the left hand side um, they're not there because they've been removed. And so um, this has tremendous impacts as well on our reef systems because uh, when we have uh, uncontrolled erosion we have mud just going out and, uh, and covering our reefs and killing our reef species. <coughs> We also have um, introduced uh, insects, in this case uh, mosquitoes. They bring avian malaria and avian pox and, um, and have uh, done tremendous uh, d damage to our native birds, our very unique native birds in the last hundred years have declined. Uh, many of them have gone extinct, uh, primarily due to uh, avian diseases that are carried by mosquitoes that, are, that, are, that were introduced um, in the early 1800s. Also transformative is the impact of, um, of uh, changes in um, laws uh, from the uh, uh, annexation uh, to the United States and the intentional in the first uh, couple of years um, transformation of our marine laws from a locally based, um, uh, locally controlled um, stewardship to uh, open access. Um, and because of that, because of that and uh, modern uh, fishing techniques and really uh, no, no significant protections or, or insufficient protections where we have them, our reef species have declined 75% and more in, um, throughout Hawaii. And some of this is due to the tremendous population growth um, really in the last 50 years in particular. Um, when I was growing up, the population of the state was about 800,000, now it's, it's less than the number of lawyers in India, <laughs> but still high. Um, and the other thing that has happened a lot since, really since World War II, is you have this tremendous um, uh, uh, influx of, uh, of tra uh, and transportation lines, planes and boats, shipping, um, the ability to carry cargo uh, uh, from all over the world. So our, really our, our huge threat to Hawaii is invasive species because our systems are so unique and don't have um, defenses. And so uh, a new plant, Myconia, ginger, we have, we have plants that have come from, we have ginger from the Himalayas that have, um, that don't act the same here. They take over because they don't have the, the bugs and the funguses that are keeping them in check there. Um, and so they'll turn a forest into a, a monoculture of, of 
of plants that um, kill everything else out there. Um, and so that will, that will be uh, transformative for our forests as well. And then in addition, we have both new technologies that allow us uh, uh, much more aggressive um, harvesting, and also what, what you alluded to, um, Chief Justice, the, the disconnect um, in modern society, um, and particularly ur in urban society, the disconnect from the uh, obligation of stewardship of our resources. But the opportunity here is to reconnect that. That's our opportunity, is to, is to strengthen that and to reconnect it and to, um, to, to bring, um, bring that sense of stewardship uh, back and broaden it in our, in our society. The impact of this change has been a tremendous uh, conversion of our native ecosystems. The, the green is really what's left um, that's in good shape. The red is completely destroyed. The yellow is uh, um, uh, very heavily impacted. So we have 4, 000, 4 million acres of land in Hawaii. And uh, half of it is still decent forest, about an eighth of it is really excellent forest still, um, and the rest of it is, is completely converted and is, is sort of lost. So our goal is to protect the rest, and that's where collaboration comes in. So one of the th things that's so unique about Hawaii, I think, or we are, we are proud to be able to do is to work very closely together, and so this is a, uh, an example of uh, watershed partnerships that we have developed throughout Hawaii. Um, there are uh, a dozen of them now throughout uh, the state, and they are composed of public and private um, uh, landowners and, uh, who are acting as stewards collectively. And so you can ignore land boundaries, you can fence uh, and remove the hooved animals from the core areas um, where it's most important, with really without regard to um, who owns what where. It's just, it's, it's, we're all uh, working together to try to develop uh, strategic plans and funding and to do um, good stewardship on that. So this is an example of um, upper left. We, um, on the Three, Mile, Three Mountain Alliance on Hawaii Island, an area that, um, that uh, was fenced and uh, uh, the pigs were removed. And so um, when that happened, the forest had a chance to recover and the ferns came back. Um, bottom left, uh, again, this is goat control. Um, just totally denuded and, um, and uh, once, um, once the, the area was secured, um, the, um, the, actually what came back, surprisingly, was native plants. So we were very happy about that. Um, <clears throat> okay, just a little on, on climate change. Uh, Chip covered it uh, in, in great depth. But um, we, have, we have several uh, areas of, of great impact to our natural resources from climate change. And the first is really what's uh, expected to be a shrinking of the forest belt that we get our water from. And so as uh, climate warms, uh, it, it, um, it, the, the heat um, moves up the mountain. It also compresses uh, the uh, forest cloud belt from the top. So because you have a sort of triangular shape island, you're shrinking it, and so the area that you're capturing your water from also shrinks as well. Um, and Chip covered the, the great um, variations between uh, heavy rainfall and, and drought, and this is um, expected to significantly impact our native ecosystems as well over time. The other impacts are, of course, um, sea level rise and uh, coral bleaching. Um, and so, you know, what we have to do um, for, for both of these is to, is to um, really work on strengthening our resilience of our native ecosystems. So the, the healthier, healthier they are, the more resilient they will be. So if uh, a marine system is, is, um, is protected from some of the threats from uh, unsustainable fishing, um, on sh uh, sources of pollution from the land, um, an invasive species, it will have a better chance to, to uh, survive warming events than otherwise. Um, uh, mosquitoes uh, are going to uh, go up, further up into the system, forest system right now, and so our, our forest birds will be at greater risk. So that more healthy our forests are um, in the future, the better they will be able to, um, to re resist um, transformation that will, that will uh, in turn um, harm our, our, um, our native species. 
And so again, uh, I, ju I just want to emphasize that it's the, um, the um, ha having an ethic that's rooted in our host culture and the relationship between humans and the environment that is, makes this so um, strong emotionally and also our, our uh, uh, deep uh, desire to work together um, uh, from across, across different disciplines and, 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 um, and segments of the community to, um, to protect and restore our native ecosystem. And of course, I would be remiss if I didn't end on the high note of our upcoming World Conservation Congress. And we're, uh, we're very proud to be hosting the World Conservation Congress in just two and a half months here in September. And we hope this is a great opportunity to learn and share with the rest of the world um, our um, strengths and our challenges and to be able to use this as an opportunity to advance um, conservation for Hawaii and for the planet. Thank you.